11 years ago, Starline Brass developed a cartridge, or case rather, and they call it the 45 Cowboy Special. Now, basically, all this is is a 45 Colt that is the length of a 45 ACP. And there's a couple of neat things about this. And the reason why they did it, or at least my speculation, is for cowboy action shooting, when you're shooting lighter loads, gallery loads, whatever you want to call it, 45 Colt has a lot of case volume. And if you're using a light, smokeless load, you'll get erratic pressures, erratic burn, because there's so much volume and so little powder, and it's in there floating around. And so what they did is they decided to just trim it down and make it a 45 ACP length. And the cool thing about that is you can use 45 ACP data, which is pretty nifty. Because even if you're loading black, I should stop saying load because the YouTube honchos probably won't like that. So even if you're using black powder in a 45 Colt, you still have to use a bunch of filler or wads or whatever to take up that airspace. At least it's advised. So that's one of the reasons why they came up with these. It's basically just a short 45 Colt. Now every time I've tried to get a hold of some of these, by the time I see that they're available and get to the computer to try and order some, they're already gone. So I don't know if they're that popular or I'm just that unlucky. But I wanted to give these a try. And so what I did is I decided I was just going to make some myself. If all it is really is a cut down 45 Colt, well, hell, I think I could manage that. So I used my Lyman case trimming tool. Now, that's a fair amount that you're taking off of there. No doubt about it. It's 45 Colt's pretty long and 45 ACP is pretty short. Uh, but it does work. So. Let me show you how we did that. All right, so we have our full length 45 Colt cases that have been sized, deprimed, and washed in the washing machine. Because you really want the inside of the case as clean as the outside, especially when you're going to use a trimmer, because sometimes that pilot can get jammed up in there and stuff. So I already have this all set up. I don't know why I just tossed that one when I have this one in my hand, but either way. So, I get it chucked up, I push that in there to get it straight, get it tightened up. And I just double check it, make sure it's still square, hit it again. And then, deburr it a little bit. And there you have 45 Cowboy Special. Now I'm sure there's going to be someone that says, how come you don't have this mounted to your bench and all of that stuff? And well, to be perfectly honest, I don't use this tool that often. When I have to size or trim rifle brass, rather, I prefer the Lee tool. I find these work faster and easier than having to set this up and all that other stuff. But, you know, you still need one of these because you never know when you need to take uh, three-eighths of an inch off your 45 Colt case. So after we got them trimmed to length, cut down, a little bit more than a trim, I would say. After we got them cut down, I decided I was going to try two different loads. One is a smokeless, one is a black powder. The black powder load is 16 grains of 3F Swiss with a 250 grain lead round nose flat point. And there is a little bit of compression, not much, and no need for wads or filler or anything like that. The smokeless load is 5.5 grains of HP38 with a 200 grain lead round nose flat point, and that is right off of Hodgden's website for a 45 ACP. Now, as far as assembling these goes, it's a little bit more complicated. Starline tells you that you can use a roll crimp for a 45 auto rim. I've never seen a roll crimp for a 45 auto rim. I would like to get one. So if somebody has one or knows where I can get one, let me know because I would like one. So we're using a 45 Colt shell holder, but we're using 45 ACP slash auto rim 
dies. And I just crank the taper crimp down to really try and crimp it as best as I can. I really like my black powder cartridges to have a pretty serious crimp, uh, even though it's probably much more crucial to have a good crimp with a smokeless load. Uh, that's just the way I like to roll. So here's what that looks like. My sincere apologies, dear viewer. If you were expecting to see me assemble one of these, well, I'm afraid I just can't do that because the digital overlords that control YouTube have determined that anyone learning anything that could be remotely helpful when it comes to assembling munitions is bad. Now, the firearm that we're going to test these in is my third model Dragoon that I have a cartridge conversion in. This is a cursed cartridge conversion, and it's chambered in 45 Colt. Um, there's a variety of firearms that I could have tested this in, but I just wanted to shoot this one because, uh, well, I haven't shot it in a while, and I do like it. It is a lot of fun to shoot. As much as I like my Walker, the Dragoon is much easier, only by comparison to the Walker, to wield. So, here's how it went. All right, so this is our 45 Colt Cowboy Special, whatever, 16 grains of 3F Swiss with a 250 grain lead flat point. Aw. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 6.98, and I hit it. Six eighty-two. <laughs> ah. Six eighty-two. Six eighty-two. <laughs> Consistency. Yeah. Oh yeah. Lousy clouds. Yeah. Oh yeah, that old chestnut. I wouldn't think 16 grains would do that, but... Hi, my goodness. Alright, last try. Couldn't end on a hit. Mm -hmm. So this is 5.5 .5 grains of HP 38 with a 200 grain lead round nose flat point. Six eighty two. Six eighty two. <laughs> Error. Six eighty two. My God. Seven thirty seven. I rolled more with it. Again. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> Clouds. Oh, well, here it goes. Way high. high. Yep. Just to the right of them. Just to the right. <laughs> well, shit, I quit. End on a hit, man. End on a hit. Well, a little luck never hurt, that's for sure. Now, those were good plinking loads. Those were a lot of fun, especially the black powder loads. 
I'm not sure why the smokeless loads were that wimpy uh, because I was expecting around 750 or 800 feet per second and I was not getting that and they certainly didn't feel like they were 750, 800 feet per second. Uh, I'm always struggling with my chronograph anytime it's cloudy like this. My chronograph does not work well unless it is in direct sunlight. So take it with a grain of salt. Still, uh, the smokeless loads, rather inconsistent. Again, it might have something to do with the crimp or the firearm that we're using it in. Uh, but the black powder loads with 16 grains of 3F Swiss were a lot of fun to shoot and even reasonably accurate. Now, that was smokeless loads that I was shooting at 180 yards there. So they're not completely inaccurate either. Now, you might notice that in the picture here after they're loaded up, you can see that there is a little bit of a bump there at the end of the cartridge. And the reason why is because the brass down here gets thicker towards the base, towards the rim. And so you're really squeezing it in there. But it did chamber just fine in that firearm. And also, something I also tested, because I read this, I read it on the internet, so it must be true, is this is my Smith & Wesson 1917, chambered in 45 ACP. And I have moon clips when I run ACP, but I also have 45 auto rim in this box right here. And this is typically what I shoot out of it is 45 auto rim. But somebody said that these will chamber in a 1917 Colt or Smith & Wesson. And sure enough, they do. And they spin free. Now, I don't know if it would work because they do have a little bit of movement. I don't know if it would work. But that is something that I'd like to try. I mean, I have plenty of 45 auto rim brass, but something that is kind of neat. We'll see if that works maybe next time. So, as usual, folks, if you thought this video didn't suck, do me a favor and hit the like button. Consider subscribing. And if you did think it sucked, go make your own damn video.